Today we have some interesting discoveries happening out there. Some of it a little bit of speculation. Some of it, well, is sort of fact-based, in, in, actually, because we're looking at some potential information on the Nintendo Switch 2. And look, we obviously talk a lot about Nintendo's upcoming platform because it's coming out in probably, if I had to guess, a year, if not less than a year. And it's probably going to be unveiled sometime in the next six months. So we obviously have a lot to talk about when it comes to this platform because as we get closer and closer to reveal interesting things are happening and it does turn out that Nintendo might have actually I don't know I can't call it accidentally but they might have revealed something about Nintendo Switch 2 in the latest direct and just sort of hoped nobody would notice now before I dive in I do want to remind you we are on a road to 150,000 subscribers so if you would subscribe to the channel and you're not you know that that, that would just be awesome as we're trying to hit this goal uh, you know heck maybe we have a 200k goal before Nintendo switch 2 comes out I don't know maybe that's something we could throw out there either way you can go ahead and ring a link that ding a link to be notified of all future videos and you know what drop a like if you're really enjoying this content now before I get into any of this I need to give credit to a couple of people now the first person I want to give credit to is Andres Restart who really brought this to my attention in a real way last night we had a fairly in-depth conversation behind the scenes on this particular thing that he already covered in his video but we need to also make sure that we give original credit for this to Jake Steinberg over from Game Explained for making these connections. I want to make sure I also give a shout out to Nintendo Gaming Forum Family Boards. They have a giant thread there talking about Nintendo's future hardware, and in there, people discovered some additional things we're going to add on to this original theory. So, what are we talking about? Well, it so it looks like Nintendo might have actually unveiled something about the controllers for the Nintendo Switch 2. Now, again, this is going to be speculative, but there is some evidence. Now, in Nintendo's Nintendo Direct, Super Mario RPG shows off different colors for the various buttons, A, B, X, and Y. Now, this has nothing to do with Nintendo Switch 2, but this is to prove a point. The A is red, the yellow is B, the green is Y, and blue is X. This is actually the exact same color scheme used on the Super Famicom controller out of Japan. Now, in the West, if you actually look at the original uh, release of Super Mario RPG, it, you know, you didn't use those colors and only used them there. Whatever. This doesn't really mean a whole lot other than to indicate that Nintendo does put these colors in their games to reference, you know, systems and controllers. Okay. They did not update this for Nintendo Switch to go to all gray buttons or whatever. They actually kept the references in and used it to reference the original Famicom or Super Famicom in this case. Now, this is why this actually is important to note from Super Mario RPG. Because what's interesting is the button commands in Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, the remake, remaster, whatever we're going to call this at this point, uses A for red, yellow for B, etc., etc., etc. It is the same color scheme used on the Super Famicom. Also, the astute among you might know, it's the same color scheme used on the new Nintendo 3DS as well, which used that same color scheme from the Super Famicom. Of course, in this case, we can't say that this color scheme is a reference to the original system. If you go back and look at the original release of Thousand Year Door, it actually used the color scheme of the Nintendo GameCube. I wonder why it would use that color scheme for buttons. It is, after all, a Nintendo GameCube game. So there's no real reason to include references to the Super Famicom controller uh, button colors, as that was never something that this game was ever playable on. So it's interesting to think about them putting those colors in there. Now, what's interesting at looking at the red, green, blue, yellow situation is Nintendo has obviously used these on prior platforms, the Super Famicom as an example, and even the mid-gen refresh new Nintendo 3DS. So this could potentially be nodding to the fact that Nintendo Switch 2 is using this button color scheme layout. Now, why would Nintendo Switch 2 go to this after using gray on the Nintendo Switch? And the reason could be just to indicate a new controller type, right? That, that would be the idea. Let's say that this is another detachable controller system that has two detachable controllers. 
And while they might not call them Joy-Con 2s, we're going to refer to them as Joy-Con 2s in the moment. What's interesting in thinking about that possibility is if they want to make sure they signify that these are different than the original Joy-Cons in more than just a slight visual way, one way could be a extra visual cue of the buttons being a different color. Also, Nintendo has a patent we've already talked about for a hall sensing control stick using a fluid, and that could also be included in these as well. So even if they looked similar, they wouldn't actually be the exact same controller. Now, that is really, really interesting to think about and how these color references in Thousand Year Door could be referencing Switch 2 because in order for it to be referencing Switch 2, we have to accept that this game would be a cross-generation title. Now, Thousand Year Door is the only title from the Direct, from Nintendo, published by Nintendo, that has a general 2024 release date, meaning it could release any time next year, including after the Nintendo Switch 2 launches, where they would obviously want to sell copies on, say, the Nintendo Switch 2 and the base Nintendo Switch. Now, of course, you can look at the game from a visual perspective and notice there's a lot of jagged edges. You would presume if this was brought over to Nintendo Switch 2, it would clearly have clean edges. It would obviously have anti-aliasing and or use DLSS to clean things up a bit. And look, it is possible that we obviously were looking at the Nintendo Switch version of the game, not the Switch 2 version of the game. That's not really what I'm debating here, especially since it appears to run at 30 FPS. However, they could just be using the same button control colors between the versions because, hey, if we're just going to use DLSS to beef it up, why change a bunch in the code base and change color codes? So it is a theory. It is a plausible theory, and I am very interested on in what you guys think about it down below. But that's not the only place these button colors are starting to appear. As if it wasn't enough, as if it wasn't enough, there is also some thoughts about this. Fashion Dreamer, which is an upcoming game for Nintendo Switch in November, is also using this color scheme, and it's made by Marvelous slash Xseed. Yiz X for Nintendo Switch is also coming to PlayStation, also features this color scheme made by Falcom, and it drops at the end of the month. The notable thing about these developers is they are Japanese developers and the most likely Japanese developers to have early dev kit units to start planning out bringing current games over to the next platform would be Japanese developers. So it's entirely possible that they were already planning a release for the new system and they pre-prepared by dropping these color schemes in there. Now, we need to obviously play a little bit of devil's advocate and maybe you need to hear this before the thoughts. They could be nothing, right? This could mean nothing. Did the same team who is remastering Super Mario RPG also happen to remaster Thousand Year Door? And maybe they simply just carried over some code and happened to use the same color scheme. Is that color scheme even final considering the game as a vague 2024 release? To make reference to this, the original showcase of Super Mario Wonder had white slash, you know, sort of gray button prompts over in June, and today, with the updated demos and the updated showcases, now those button prompts are yellow. So we can't even presume that these are even final at this point. Obviously, this assumption, again, only works if Thousand Year Door is indeed a cross-gen title. And beyond all of that, I just don't know that this really means a whole lot, but I wanted to present both sides of the story, the theory, the criticism of that theory, and then you guys can let me know what you think about this down below. But this isn't the only thing we have to talk about today. Thanks to our dear friend, Andres Restart. This is something he's actually brought up a few times to me privately, and I think twice now on our podcast. He brought it up, I think, back in you know around June when we were reacting to the June Direct, and he brought it up again last night on one of our live streams. And again, this is something him and I have discussed because it's really interesting to note. And since he finally brought it out and put it in a video yesterday, I finally feel comfortable after the fact mentioning it in this video. And this is something to indicate the Nintendo Switch 2 could be getting revealed quite soon because Nintendo's already setting up their Nintendo Directs for such a thing. Now, again, doesn't mean it's going to be revealed in a Nintendo Direct, but setting up Nintendo Directs to indicate a new platform. How does this work? So, yesterday I focused on my opinion about the Nintendo Direct and how it's setting up a reveal for the Nintendo Switch 2. Of course, this was just an opinion, speculation. It doesn't inherently mean anything on its own. Friend of the channel, Andres Restart, made a similar video to the one I did yesterday. 
but he also found some interesting evidence that goes beyond the speculative intent of games shown in the Direct. All the titles of the General Directs in 2023 include Dash Nintendo Switch in the title. They were not doing this with any Directs before 2023. This sort of suggests there is going to be upcoming Directs airing that are going to have games that aren't for or about the Nintendo Switch, and using this tagging in the title helps signify what product the Direct is for. Now again, this is sort of interesting throwing this out there. It is something Andres Restart himself discovered, and full credit to him, and I honestly think that this might be the strongest evidence yet that Nintendo has already got their plans in motion for what's happening next. Anyways, folks, that is my update today for Nintendo Switch 2. Don't know if we'll have more tomorrow. I do have some other videos sort of planned in the works, something on Metroid Prime 4. Very interested to see uh, how you guys react to that one. And I, I got some other stuff in the works, maybe for Thousand Year Door as well, because even though I might not be the most hyped for that game, it is a big deal that it's coming back, and there are some deeper conversations to have about that. If you're enjoying these more single-topic, conversation-focused videos, I'd appreciate all of your feedback down in the comments below. We're still going to have our General Prime News videos every single day, Monday through Friday, when there is obviously enough news to justify them existing. Otherwise, we're going to create a lot of interesting discussions along the way as we lead up to the launch of Mario Wonder. We have Super Princess Peach, or I guess we shouldn't be calling it that anymore. The Princess Peach Showtime. It has an official title and all. That game looks utterly incredible. Thousand Year Door. We have so many more amazing experiences ahead. The Game Awards as well. Will Tears of the Kingdom walk away with the crown? It's got some pretty stiff competition. Future discussions for another day. I'll catch you guys in the next video.